GL recently found that 17 of 24 major federal agency headquarter buildings in the D.C. area are at less than 25 percent occupancy, with some less than 10 percent full. GSA's own headquarters was only 11 percent occupancy, despite being the government's primary real estate agent and property manager. GAO notes that the federal government owns 511 million square feet of office space and leases another 180 million square feet from the private sector for use by federal agencies. That's almost 700 million square feet total of office space available to the federal government, and the cost of maintaining and operating out of that space is, is ridiculously high. Administrator Carnahan, how much does it cost to operate and maintain office space used by federal agencies across the government? Is the cost in the billions? Mark. Sorry. What I, what I can speak to, Congressman, is the Federal Buildings Fund, which I referred to in my statement. And that is the, the fund that lease payments by government agencies uh, so it's, hey. it's in the billions, right? Yes, yes. So according to GSA data from the fiscal year 2022 federal real property profile, the total annual cost of buildings owned, leased, or otherwise managed by the federal government is over $25 billion. Federal agencies spend $2 billion annually to operate and maintain federal office buildings and $5 billion on rental lease payments. Administrator, I think you agree with me that a huge portion of federal office space sits empty or underutilized. If we could just reduce the amount of office space leased by 10%, we would save roughly half a billion dollars on lease payments annually, correct? I couldn't agree with you more that we have a huge opportunity to optimize right. our footprint and eager to work with you to get that done. Well, Administrator, the federal government owns properties all over the nation that are underutilized. Many of these properties could be put to more productive use, helping local economies. Selling these properties could yield billions in sales proceeds and save hundreds of millions of dollars every year in operation and maintenance costs, right? That's true. In fact, the GSA data in fiscal year 2022 said the limited disposal activity that occurred still netted $36 million in sales proceeds and $22 million in averted operations and maintenance costs. Administrator, given, the federal, given that the federal workers are teleworking, to such a high degree. And given how empty our federal office buildings are, I assume GSA is working to downsize the federal government's office space footprint to realize these cost savings. So what's the holdup? So I'm glad you asked that question. This is a topic of great interest to me, and I think we are fully aligned on what needs to happen. We need to optimize, which means shrink, and consolidate whenever we can to make sure our buildings are both useful uh, for communities where they sit, but also save money for taxpayers. Are, are the federal agencies reluctant to give up office space? So, Congressman, I, I would love to talk a little bit about what we're doing right now, if you, if you give me a minute to, to, to begin the disposal process. Last week, we announced 23 properties uh, and facilities across the country that we intend to begin the disposal process on. That will be 3.5 million square feet of reduction. And get this, it's a billion dollars in cost avoidance and deferred maintenance and other things, not even counting the so, value that we'll get for the sale. So is, this is, is the, just the beginning, and we want to do more Is of that. President Biden on board with this? Is he, is he pushing agencies to actually surrender space that they aren't using? Well, we are working closely with the folks at OMB on all of this. Happy Thanksgiving, friends. I have good news to share with you. So more stimulus is coming in just a few days. A new batch of stimulus checks are set to arrive for many Americans. But there is still time left to take action and claim this money if you meet the eligibility requirements. My dear friends, please do me a big favor and watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the details. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community, in a video later today, I will be announcing the winners of this week's Walmart gift card giveaway. So please make sure, friends, that you do stay tuned for that video. Remember, the more videos you comment on, the greater your chances of winning the weekly giveaways. Starting in just eight days, nearly two million state income tax rebates will start going out to Alabama residents. 
lawmakers, and Governor Kay Ivey early this year approved $150 in income tax rebates for individuals and $300 rebates for married couples who file joint returns. The rebates will be sent electronically or by check, depending on how filers receive the refunds. Governor Ivey told reporters, Our country is in the midst of tough times, and Alabama families from all walks of life are unfortunately seeing that their paychecks are not going as far as they once did. State leaders in the spring had a record $2.8 billion surplus in the education budget to spend. The $393 million for the rebates came from the pool of money. Governor Ivey had originally proposed rebates of $400 and $800. So in order to qualify for this rebate, residents of Alabama had to file tax returns for 2021 by October 17, 2022. State Senate Minority Leader Bobby Singleton said in a recent statement, Inflation has hit our state hard in recent years. These rebates will return some dollars back to the taxpayers and provide relief to help ease that inflationary burden. Many other states are committed to distributing one-time tax rebates to its residents in time for the holiday. Every year, most Alaskans receive a permanent fund dividend. This essentially shares the state's oil and mineral revenues. The check amounts continue to jump over the last few years. Alaska has already began issuing checks, but some are still on the way to eligible residents. Gathering around the Thanksgiving table will cost Americans less this Thursday than it did last year. Prices on key holiday expenses, including Thanksgiving dinner staples, airfare, and gasoline, have fallen in the past 12 months. Now, the Biden administration, whose approval ratings have been weighed down by persistently high inflation, wants credit for those falling costs. The White House has said, ahead of the holiday season, costs are down for everything from airline tickets to toys and televisions. The Biden-Harris administration is working every day to create more breathing room for hardworking families. According to White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, this year's Thanksgiving dinner is the fourth cheapest ever. But whether voters will give Biden credit for the fact that some products and services are cheaper today is far from certain. That is because prices for staples are still higher overall than they were before the crisis. And overall prices for food at home were up last month. The White House press secretary pinned inflation on supply chain disruptions, which have contributed to higher prices on certain goods. But economists say that at least some of the blame also belongs to the massive $1.9 trillion spending bill that Biden signed last year. But it remains to be seen whether Biden's message will be accepted by millions of Americans. A Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people will cost an average of $61 this year. That is down 4.5% from last year's record high of $64. However, food is not the only Thanksgiving expense that's cheaper this year than last. Gasoline prices have fallen markedly since September. This could be the lowest price for Thanksgiving week since 2020, when the crisis cut demand for travel. Airfares in October were also down more than 13% from this point last year. Yet none of this has quieted Biden's critics, who blame the Democrats' spending bills and his regulatory agenda for inflation. An October poll from Bloomberg News found that 65% of U.S. voters who ranked the economy as their top issue greatly disapproved of Biden's economic agenda. So, dear friends, what are your thoughts on the current state of our economy? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. That is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. 
Thank you so much, friends, for being part of this community. To say thank you, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway in a video later today. So please make sure that you do stay tuned. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving.